That's a big ball. Oh, it's 8.40 in the morning. All right, welcome back to another video. We are here in Africa with the African Allure hunting safaris. Uh, we just got into camp a couple hours ago. We shot our bows, made sure everything was dialed, but we're getting ready to head out for our first sit of the trip. Uh, my main target is a kudu on this hunt, so I'm gonna hold out for a big kudu, and then after that, I'm gonna try and go after some other animals too. All right, so me and Wyatt are in the back of the truck. We're just making our way into the blinds now. Me, Seth, and Wyatt are all gonna sit in different blinds tonight and hopefully we can all smoke something. Okay, so I just got set up in the blind. It's gonna be a little tough filming wise in here because I only have a small hole to put the main camera through. So he basically has to be in front of the camera for me to be able to shoot and get on film. But I've got a couple GoPros running too. It should work, but it's our first day, so if it doesn't go right, I just won't shoot, no big deal. But I'm just gonna sit back for now and hopefully we see something. Well, the sun is setting on our first day. Um, just saw the war dogs today, but we'll be back at it tomorrow. Whew, a little cool this morning. It's freezing. A little cool. Check out that view. Uh, it's awesome, man. Big mountains in the background. Awesome. Well, we just woke up. It's our first morning here. So we're just gonna get some breakfast real quick and head out for the morning hunt. There he is. Yeah. Rough morning this morning. Couldn't get up? No, I couldn't get to sleep last night once we got done with dinner. I think it was about one o'clock before I got to sleep. So I'll slow moving and throw one down range, see what happens, and I'll be ready to go. All right, so we just dropped Seth off with his blind. Now I'm heading out to the main cootie blind on the property. Really hoping we see him today. It's a good morning for it. He's not here with me. I've got some kudu coming in from my left.
seen kudus here before. I was here last year, but I didn't. I didn't realize that the big bulls are that much bigger than all the other ones. I mean, when he stepped out, he just dwarfed all the other kudu. And I went back and I watched the footage to see if maybe I had an opportunity to shoot him, and I missed it. And right when he first walked out, I probably could have slipped one in, but I was trying to let him just get in and get settled and then get a shot, and he just never presented me with one. He was the last one in and the first one to leave, so it's no big deal. We know he's here. I've got several more days left to hunt, so he'll be back. Alright, it's the third day. It's my second morning here in Africa. Um, I'm still going after the kudu, and I'm pulling another all-day sit today. So it's about 7.30 in the morning right now. I just got all my camera stuff finally set up. So They came in at like 9-something yesterday, and then again at 1.45. So I'm just going to sit tight and hope he shows again and gives me another chance. just stuck a kudu. I just, that looks like it, it looks good to me. I think that's where it should have been. It might have been a little bit back. He was quartering to me, but that's a lethal shot. I just shot a giant kudu. So they came in from the right, turned on this GoPro, turned on this GoPro, and I thought I turned on this camera, but I didn't hit the record button. And I almost drew back and shot him, but he kept moving. And then I looked down and saw it wasn't recording. So I was able to get it turned on and it all worked out. And I think the shot was good. I think I got lungs. I've had a minute to compose myself. Um, I'm beyond excited right now. And I think the shot looked good. It sounded like he went down over there. I really don't know. But I, I, I'm, I don't know what to say. That is just awesome. So right now, I've got to go out and I've got to climb a tree to call Ryan. He's going to come get me. and. We're going to see if we can find him, and I'm sorry this footage is really shaky, but I can't stop shaking, so it is what it is. It's so exciting. He went straight that way. I uh, thought I heard him crash back in the bush there, but it's hard to tell. But anyways, Seth and Ryan just got here. Um, I haven't looked at all yet, so we're going to take a walk up this way, see if we can find some blood or see if we can find him.
Okay, so there's a bunch of guys standing in a circle up here. I have a feeling they found it, so we're gonna go check it out. That thing is huge, dude. Oh. That is the biggest bodied animal I've ever seen. How's that shot look? Oh, this is good. This is good. Looks deadly. Look at this thing. That's a nice cutie bull. Yeah, Good night. Look at those white tips. Mm. An old bull. Oh my god. Boy, I tell you what. That is a damn bull. All right, well, he didn't go very far at all. Probably 100 yards into the bush and we got him. But I just, I simply can't believe how big this animal actually is. I mean, this is a beautiful old bull. Took me three days of hunting. Uh, this is the one that came in yesterday that I didn't get a shot at, but he came back today at about 8.30 and I sent one through him at 20 yards. So now the work begins, we gotta get him out of here and it's a long way from a road, so. All right, so we got the kudu here at the skinning shed. Um, Seth is gonna cut some steaks off of it. We're gonna let it hang for a few days and then we're gonna eat it for dinner. So the next time I see you on this video will be when we're eating the kudu for dinner because Wyatt just called, he shot something. Uh, we gotta go track it. And then tomorrow we have another hunt with Seth that I'll be filming on that one. So see you later. All right, so we've been out hunting all day. We just got back in and the sous vide has been working for about 22 and a half hours now. So about an hour and a half and we're gonna have some dinner. Okay, Ryan's got us a very hot bed of coals. These are only gonna sit on here just long enough that they are hard on the outside and they stay pretty tender on the inside. So it's no more than like two to three, three minutes per side. And then we're gonna flip them. So you can see now. Let's sit there. We'll flip them. Leave them for another three or four minutes. They'll be ready to go. No. Time to flip. We'll let them sit maybe just a little bit longer on this side. Those steaks are looking great. Can I bring the potatoes out? Yeah, bring the potatoes out. That'd be great. Uh, this one needs to give just another minute or so. This one is done. Yeah, but you said they need to stand in the floor. Okay, now we're gonna take these off the hot coals. We're gonna go in. We're gonna cover them with aluminum foil, let them set, and then we'll cut one and let you see what it looks like. We'll lay them all right on top of each other. It's really important to let the meat stand because it really reabsorbs a lot of the juices. Anytime you cook a meat, you should let it sit, preferably 10 minutes, but five is good. Those look good. These do look good. Okay, so now we've given it about 10 minutes. We're gonna just, let's just pull one of these steaks off and see what the inside looks like. So this, this is kudu steak. And the inside of that is just a, right at medium. So if you're cooking it for a big group, you can always cook these a little bit 
less temperature. You could do them at like 120 and then finish them off to about 127, 130. For beef, obviously know what meat you're cooking, but you could finish them off for big groups. Most everyone likes medium, so it's a good place to stop. That's why at temperature, inside temperature, this is probably around 135 degrees. Oh, the ketchup. Wow. Off the road. That's really good. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Um, awesome, awesome hunt here with the African Allure. And we have a ton of more videos coming at you from this trip. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time.